Hey there, are you looking for a great hack to turn your wall of grey bland looking models into something you can display? One of the greatest and easiest hacks of doing this, Army Painters Speed Paints. Speed Paints are made to do highlight, shadow and your mid-tone all in one coat. A little bit of special formalization in the components of the paint and gravity helps to achieve this. So let's have a look at speed paints today. I'm going to show you a range of 23 colors and apply them to some white floating robes. So we'll liberally apply some speed paint to some models, we'll let them sit, settle, and then we'll review them one by one and we'll see what they're all about. So if you followed any of my previous videos, you've managed to find out where to download some great STL files from how to run them through your slicer, how to print them out and end up with a finished miniature model. Now what do you do with it? Perhaps your experience with 3D printing, but the world of painting and getting into the creative artistic side of painting is a little bit daunting. And to be honest, if you're getting into full on miniature painting with acrylics, oil paints, washes, all sorts of things, it can be pretty, pretty daunting. So today I want to showcase the speed paints I own. I have 23 different colors. This is a range put out by Army Painter. Um, speed paint, as the name implies, it's to speed up the painting process. You'll also find it's to simplify the painting process. So if you're not an experienced painter, but you want to turn your big wall of grey shame into something a little bit more artistic and suited to being displayed on your bookshelf, speed paints are a good, quick, easy way. So if we have a look, here at the bottle. You can see three different colors on the one bottle here. What that's implying is this speed paint in itself can give you a highlight, a mid-tone, and some shadow with just one coat. What it does is paint it onto the surface quite liberally, it's like quite a lot. It will naturally run over the recesses, down into the recesses, pull away from all the high exposed parts of the print, using gravity of course and will pull down in the recesses. This will give you a dark colour in the bottom of the recesses which will do your shadows and it will leave you a nice light tint at the top of the ridges where it's pulled away from and that's your highlight and then a nice mid-tone and gradual shade down into the shading. Somebody who wants to just give a little extra ping to their display pieces, this is a great investment to get you into painting. But today I want to show you what you can do with speed paint. Also run off a whole lot of these floating cloak miniatures and I'm literally just going to give a liberal coat of speed paint over each miniature uh, we will let it dry I'm going to apply it quite liberally using quite a big brush and just the texture of this robe should be showcase the speed paint quite well But the one thing to bear in mind with speed paints, don't want to go back and be running your brush over it when it's not dry. It will ruin the effect. You want to be quite liberal, quite quick. Get over those areas and then let it dry. And one of the other things to bear in mind is just how you lay your model when that speed paint is drying. Obviously if I lay it like this it's going to pull, pull away from these areas and settle in these deep recesses so this will end up quite light. And we'll have really dark recesses in here whereas I'm going to paint them this way and we should get it pulling nicely down here and pulling down in the bottom and that will see how it looks in its shadows. We'll just apply it over. I'm not too worried about cleaning it up. I'm just going to let it pull into the recesses as it will naturally. If you're actually using speed paints to paint and you find it's getting a little bit thick and pulling in some of these areas and you don't want it to, you can clean your brush out 
give it a bit of a dry and you can use that to soak some of the full speed paint out. Let's take a look at these one by one. This is wholly white. You see it's covered but it, it did go on very thin when I was applying it so you can see the white's coming through. It is snuck down into the recesses there. This is not too bad to paint with but it will show some of the colour underneath. The runic grey. So this is pulled quite nicely in those recesses. Pulled away from those highlights quite a lot be another one where you might have a little bit of uh, coverage issues going over a strong colour. Now we have Gravelord Grey. This is a nice darker tone to it. Um, you can see it's stained. We've got a bit more black with the white undercoat. You can see it's pulled very nicely down the bottom there. Pulled nicely on his hood as well. It's quite a nice rustic look. And then our grim black. You can see this is not as insipid as the others. You can still see those highlights there. So it's really left a good stain on the white. But still pulled away quite nicely. There's a good dark recess, good dark shading. You can see that from the hood. So hardened leather. I have used this previously for leather. Uh, it works quite well as a undercoat, especially if you just touch it up with a bit of acrylic afterwards. A very nice dark brown, very leathery sort of brown, um, but quite nice where it has pulled away on those highlights, but still have that tone to it. And here's the other brown, our dark wood, pretty fitting I think. Yeah, definitely work as a dark wood stain. Very good, pretty happy with that one. Malignant green. Very yellow in colour. It's a very slightly mustardy green. Could also pass as a yellow if you wanted it to. It's not too too bad a coverage. Uh, it's still a little bit white. Uh, so a little bit insipid. Plasmatic bolt. Has pulled away leaving white white highlights but pulled very nice looks quite a nice color orc skin very nice green really good coverage it went on really easy pulled really nice down the bottom here and in the hood very nice that was that was nice to put on actually Camo Cloak Green. Well named, it is more the Camo Green. Still quite a dark pool down the bottom. That wasn't too bad to put on. Very nice. And Absolution Green. This went on quite nice, really good coverage. a nice sort of stain over the prime. Pulls quite nicely, the hood looks quite good. Pallid bone. Quite good for a dirty bone look. Where it pulls, it leaves a nice dark colour. It does pull away from the highlights quite easy. If you were using this as bone, you might want to touch up a couple of bits with some off-white. Sand Golem. This is quite a rich yellow. You can see it darkens quite a lot where it pulls. Again, good coverage over the prime. Leaves a nice staining colour to it. Here's our Zealot Yellow. Quite a nice yellow, obviously. You can see that orange tinge to it where it pulls. Be aware it's going to be a yellow cross orange. Now, Crusader skin. I've used this a few times as a skin substitute. It's not my favourite. 
I find the coverage is not very good, especially over a Xenothole. It takes a lot of coverage to punch over that black. Not too bad over the white prime, but yeah, if you have that dark black Xenothole, it struggles to punch through it. This is Fire Giant Orange. It's very nice, this went on pretty easy. Good orange to a very burnt orange pool. Not quite well. Now these two reds I really like. This is Slaughter Red. But as you can see, it pulls to a very nice dark dried blood red. Uh, and leaves quite a good stain over the white prime. And this is blood red. Leaves quite a nice dark red down where it pulls. It's quite good on the hood. This is easy, easy to apply. Purple alchemy. It's a quite light purple. Slightly on the pinkish side, redder side of purple. Coverage is good, covers over the prime nice and easy. Hive dweller purple. More of the blue tinge purple. Nice dark pooling in the recesses in the hood. All in all, the coverage is really good over the primer. So here we have our cloud burst blue. This would be on the grey side of blue. Again, nice dark pooling. Out of the three blues, I would say coverage on this was not the best out of them. So this one, maybe over a Xenophil Prime, it would struggle to colour as well. Magic Blue. This really pops. Really nice pulling away the highlights here. Really nice deep blue, rich blue pulling. Really set on that hood. This is High Lord Blue. Yeah, very nice pulling, nice coverage over the white primer. And when I applied both of these blues, um, they appeared almost identical when they were wet. And just see that High Lord Blue is just that little bit darker now compared to that Magic Blue, slightly lighter. These two here, this one, the white of the primer is really coming through. Here to this one, which is really stained and tinted that primer, giving you that really nice one coat option. Um, but all in all, pretty good. And that's the range. Speed paints are a great addition to your toolkit. Um, great beginner's kit if you want to get into painting. Um, can be a good basing uh, start. Base the whole model with your speed paints and then go back over it and touch it up with your acrylic paints. And one, one thing to bear in mind, paints I've show, showcased today are the original speed paint came out from Army Painter um, they are now releasing um, speed paints 2.0 they've increased the range of speed paints um, I think it's 60 odd, odd colors what they've done really well with I'm looking forward to if I get my hands on it is metallic in the speed paint so one one coat metallic coat and the one problem that they've addressed with speed paint 2 over the speed paint 1 is something called reactivation so once that, that speed paint is on here and dried if you use a wash or run water over it it can reactivate the speed paint and it will start running again and pulling away um, so if you would do a wash over it you would lose some of that coverage of your speed paint and they've since addressed this with speed paint 2 so thanks for watching that hopefully it's given you a good insight into the range of colors you can get with speed paints and just how easy that one coat solution can be to help you move your printing collection away from just a gray wall display of a number of pieces into some detailed colored pieces that you're happy, happy to display hopefully you found that interesting if you're looking at buying some speed paints look into buying version 2 uh, and i think it will set you up really well start your painting journey. 
Um, if you've liked what you've seen, hit the like button. Um, feel free to subscribe. My next video is going to be using speed paints to complete one bust, start to finish, using no other acrylic, just speed paints. Um, let's see how quickly and what sort of results we can get with that. See you on the next one.